All right, in this video, I wanna show you one of the main ways that I have been using the depth map feature in DaVinci Resolve Studio over the past few weeks. Up until very recently, I thought that the depth map and the magic mask, which is another studio only resolve feature are pretty much the same thing because I would see a bunch of people using them for the same stuff like removing backgrounds or putting text behind things. And there are definitely situations where you can use either one of these features and get a pretty good looking result doing the same thing. But there are also situations when I feel like the depth map is going to do a way better job. So what the depth map does is it essentially analyzes the footage that you have it on and it generates 3D depth information for your image. It does this by figuring out which elements of the image are closer to the camera and which ones are further away. And the distance of the different objects in your scene is going to be shown in a grayscale scale image and by default objects that are closest are going to be white objects that are far away are going to be black and anything in between is going to be different shades of gray and then you can use that depth information to apply different adjustments or effects to the footage in a way that looks pretty natural because resolve is now going to apply whatever adjustments you do at a different intensity based on that grayscale depth info and how far away something is from the camera so one of the main things that i have been using the depth map for recently is color grading I've got a few clips that I will use this with to show you how it works. And we're also going to compare what it looks like if you were to try grading with the magic mask instead. This is the first clip that we're going to be looking at. Just a regular talking head setup that I did for a previous video. Not much going on in terms of color grading, just a simple conversion from S-Log to Rec. 709, which I did using Phantom LUTs, which I have a link to in the description. So let's say that I want to bring down the exposure of just the background a little bit using the depth map effect. First, I got to go into my effects library and look for the depth map. And then I am just going to drag it right into my node graph and drop it in here. If you drag it on the line, it is automatically going to connect. And this is what it is going to look like straight off the bat. And then if you go into the effect settings, you've got a few different parameters that you can tweak. So from the menu here, you can select the quality to either be better or faster. Better is going to give you better edge detection for the mask whereas faster is going to make the playback of the clip itself faster. But if you want the best possible results, you should leave it at better. Then under that, you have the resulting map adjustments. And if you tick this, you have the option to control the far limit and the near limit, which is basically telling Resolve what it should consider to be part of the foreground and what it should consider to be part of the background. Underneath that, you can isolate a specific depth, which kind of does the same thing as the menu on the top here, except this one just kind of isolates one specific depth and it almost behaves like you use the magic mask. And then under that you have map finesse and this makes the selection much more refined. It now kind of recognizes the edges of my hair and specific features of my face. And this is really useful in certain workflows that I will be talking about in a different video, but for now I am not going to be messing with this. I feel like Resolve did a pretty good job selecting the depth map for this image already just by dropping it on here. So now if I want to actually change any parameters of the background specifically, like I said, bringing down the exposure, for example, I can add an additional node after this one by hitting Alt and S. And then I want to connect this blue output into the blue input of the node that I just created. And in order to affect the background and not myself, I need to go back into the this depth map node here, and I need to click the invert button. Now you can see that I am mostly black, meaning that the changes that I make to this node are not going to affect me as much as they are going to affect whatever is white in the depth map, which in this case is going to be our background and a little bit of my chair here, but that's fine. So now I can go and uncheck this depth map preview to get rid of the overlay. And now if I go into this second node that I created, and I can just bring down the offset in order to make the background darker. I'm going to bring it down to something like 10. And as you can see, it made the background darker, but in a way that doesn't look overly artificial. So if I turn it on and off, you should notice a difference. 
And let's say I also want to cool down the background a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blue with the temperature slider here. You should be able to notice that it also does affect a little bit of my chair here, because if we go back to the depth map node, if we turn on the depth map preview, according to the depth map, this is also selected, which is the part of my chair that is being affected by the changes that we're doing in the following node. But to me, that is part of the reason why the effect actually does look a little bit more natural. So now if I go and I try to do this exact same thing with the magic mask, you should notice that there is a difference. So first, I'm just going to turn off the depth map preview here, and then I am going to switch to a different version of the same image that I did before starting this recording. So again, all we have is this one node with the conversion LUT on it. And now I can create a second node before that by hitting shift and S. And if I go down into the magic mask, I can select this little button here to tell resolve that I am going to be masking a person, which is myself. And then all I have to do is draw a line over top of myself, just like this. I can also select this button to show the mask overlay. And that way it shows me what it has selected. So as you can see, it has done a little bit of a weird job here because it is masking me, but it's also getting a little bit of the chair here. So what I can do is I can go ahead and increase the blur radius a little bit just to feather out that selection. I can also mess with the clean black and clean white sliders to get it looking a little bit more believable. And now I'll also go ahead and track this backwards and forwards, even though there's not a lot of motion in this clip specifically. And now that the magic mask is done tracking, I can go and disable this overlay here so that I don't see it anymore. I can also disable the line that I drew and I can add a new node after the magic mask. Again, I'm going to connect this output into this input. And now any changes that I do to this node are going to take into account the information from the magic mask. So again, I'm going to do the exact same changes where I drop down the exposure here to 10. But as you can see, it's only affecting me, which we don't want. So I can go back into the magic mask node here and I can click this button to invert the selection. And as you can see, this already looks kind of weird, but I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of a blue color to the background as well, just like I did with the previous version. Now, this is the result that it gave us. I could probably go ahead and try to refine this mask a little bit more, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to show you the other version that we did with the depth map. So this is what that looks like. As you can see, the effect isn't nearly as heavy handed on this version as it is on the one with the magic mask. Plus the selection that the magic mask got is also a little bit more noticeable here with this haloing around my hair and around the uh, sides of my face and my shoulders. Whereas with the version with the depth map, obviously it doesn't look as noticeable, but it also does give us a little bit of a better selection. And if we just compare compare the two side by side, you should be able to notice a very clear difference between the depth map on the left and the magic mask on the right. To me personally, the depth map gives us a better, more natural looking result than the magic mask. So I want to show you a couple more example clips with some more motion in them, because I feel like that's when using the depth map gets even better. But first, I want to quickly mention the sponsor of this video, which is Motion VFX. You've heard me talking about about them a bunch of times before already, and that's because they have been supporting me and my channel for the majority of last year. Their products are my go-to solution anytime I need motion graphics, titles, or effects for the different projects that I work on, whether it's something that I'm making for a client, a personal project, or like a YouTube video like this one. Using the plugins from Motion VFX always ends up saving me a ton of time and effort without having to sacrifice quality. And that's why I actively keep using their products and why I feel confident recommending them anytime I hear someone saying that they need video editing assets for something they're working on. Because I genuinely like them and I really do believe that their stuff can be very helpful. So if you're interested in picking up something from Motion VFX, you can use my link in the description and you can also use my code to get yourself an extra discount. And if you do get anything through my link, it's a great way of supporting me, so I appreciate it. Again, thank you to Motion VFX for their continued support. 
Right, so now we are going to look at grading a few clips where there's actually movement, which is a scenario where I feel like the depth map does a much better job to make things look a lot more natural than the magic mask. So here is a clip that we're gonna be looking at. And again, just a simple color grade before we do anything else, just the conversion LUT to get us from S-Log to Rec. 709. And I also made two versions of it and set up the needed nodes for both the depth map and the magic mask on both of them in the same way that I showed you a few minutes ago. So this is the version with the depth map. And then this is the version with the magic mask. I went ahead and selected myself with the magic mask, tracked it backwards and forwards. And I also went ahead and I set up the depth map and I used the resulting map adjustments to kind of refine a little bit of the near and far limit. So if we look at the depth map preview, this is what it looks like. But in this clip, I basically start from being really close up to the camera, and then I gradually just take a few steps back and get closer to the background. So again, for the depth map, I'm just going to create another node after it, connect the output to the input, and then I am going to drop the offset in order to make the selection darker. As you can see, it is making me darker because I forgot to click the invert button. So I'll just do that. And now it has selected the background. And I'm also going to make it a little bit cooler again. And that is what it looks like. And now if I just switch to the version with the magic mask, again, I'm going to add a new node, connect the output to the input, and then I'm going to bring down the offset to the same levels. Again, I need to go back and invert the selection. I am also going to bring up the blur radius here on the mask itself, as well as use the clean white and clean black sliders to try to get a little bit of a better selection. And I am also going to make the background cooler here. So if we flip between the version with the magic mask and the version with the depth map, you're going to notice that they look a lot more similar here. The selection around me is a little bit different, but for the most part, the actual effect that we get on the background is pretty much the same. Where things change, though, is at the point where I get further away from the camera. So here you can see that I have now taken a couple of steps back and I am also now being affected by the adjustments that I did to this node. Whereas if I go to the version with the magic mask, you can see that it is doing its best to track me. But first of all, it looks a little bit weird because of the shape that I drew on myself when I was closer to the camera. And aside from that, it also still tries to keep up and keep me unaffected by whatever it's doing to the background, which is not what we want because this doesn't look as natural as this. Because if we imagine that in this situation, I start from being close to the camera and I am exposed correctly with enough light on me, and then I move into the background, which is supposed to be darker and I want it to look darker. The version with the depth map is the one that gives me that result. Whereas the version with the magic mask just tries to maintain the same amount of exposure on me, regardless of the fact that I am now further away in the background, which is supposed to be darker. And again, if I show them to you side by side, you should notice that the version on the left with the depth map just looks more natural than the version on the right using the magic mask. You could argue that if I spent more time trying to finesse the mask that I got with the magic mask, I could get a better looking result than this. And I would agree with you. But the point is that the magic mask has issues with keeping up with movement that is more prominent in the footage. Whereas if we switch to the depth map, you can see that it does a way better job of just maintaining the levels that it's supposed to, to make it look as if I am actually moving into a part of the frame that is supposed to be darker. Again, it doesn't look perfect, but in my opinion, it does look better than the result that I got with the magic mask. And I am also going to show you the exported versions of this same clip, one using the depth map, one using the magic mask, so that you can see the effect that we're getting with either one of them when the movement is actually displayed in full and properly. And you're going to notice that the version with the magic mask just gives us a way weirder looking result.
All right, now I wanna show you one final clip that's more of an example of a situation where regardless of which one of these two you use, you're going to have a little bit of trouble getting a good looking result. So this is a clip that I shot a while back and we start on an out of focus background and then my girlfriend pops up into frame looking at her phone. So again, I set up two versions of this same clip, one with the depth map and one with the magic mask. Pretty much all of the settings are the exact same as the ones that I used in the previous two example clips. So if I enable these two nodes, this is what the image is going to look like using the depth map. And if I show you the settings that I actually used for the depth map selection, this is it. I just adjusted the far and near limit a little bit to get a bit of a better selection. And this is what that looks like. And then if we swap over to the version with the magic mask, again, I'm just gonna enable these two nodes and this is what it looks like with that. For the magic mask, I just drew a shape over our subject as well as the hand holding the phone. I adjusted the mask that it gave me initially and then I just tracked the mask backwards and forwards. And if I flip between the two versions, you should notice a difference. I would say that the main difference is in the shape of the selection itself. But what I'm actually trying to show you with this example is what the clips are gonna look like when you see the full thing with the motion in it. So as you could probably tell, both of the methods for making a selection of our subject and then affecting the background behind them look a little bit weird. The issue is that the depth map occasionally gets confused because the motion is a little bit too quick. And in this final frame, the difference between the background and the subject isn't big enough. And if I enable the depth map preview, and if I go somewhere around the middle here, you're gonna notice that the selection shifts a little bit. If I go even earlier in the clip, you can see that the selection just looks very weird because the depth map isn't really sure what is part of the background and what is part of the foreground at that time. And if we go back even further back to the start, you can see that the depth map is just getting things confused and it's generating a very weird looking grayscale image, which is also impacting the adjustments that we're doing in the node that's following it. And because of that, you can see this weird like flickering, fading going on as the motion of the subject is taking place throughout the footage. However, if we go back to the version with the magic mask, you're gonna notice that yes, it also occasionally does lose the subject and doesn't track them as well. But for the most part, it is doing a better job of sticking to where we selected throughout more of the clip. And I guess it's important to mention here that if I were to spend extra time setting up either one of these a little bit better, I could probably get a more usable result. But in general, it is something that will take me extra effort and time. So it's important to understand that both of these do have their limitations regardless of which one gives you a better result straight off the bat. So the reason I'm showing you this final clip is to give you a better idea of the fact that the magic mask can still give you pretty usable results, but in a lot of cases, getting a usable result with that is going to be a lot harder than just using the depth map instead. So that's one of the ways that you can use the depth map and resolve. Like I said, I think in a lot of cases, it's gonna give you a better looking result than using the magic mask for the same thing. But that being said, the magic mask is still very useful just for different purposes. There are a few more cool things that I have been trying out with the depth map and I will be making videos about those at some point as well. So look out for those. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.